So, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is right around the corner. After nine years, finally we're getting another addition in the Batman Arkham universe. The Arkham games were revolutionary, with their story and combat and gameplay, developer Rocksteady redefined the landscape of what it meant to be a superhero game, and set themselves apart as one of the definitive takes on the Caped Crusader. And so, with Suicide Squad nearly out, and Monolith's Wonder Woman games still in development, and even James Gunn hinting at more games taking place in his new DCU, it's gotten me thinking more about other DC properties that deserve their own game. Hey, hey DC, I got an idea. Yeah, come closer and I'll tell it to you. Just make a fucking Superman game already. This video is brought to you by GlassesUSA.com. Everyone likes to make fun of the Clark Kent disguise, how nobody can recognize that he's Superman when he's just wearing glasses. Firstly, it's more than that. He, it's like a whole production. He changes his body language and his hair and he puts on an act to throw people off. But also, you'd be surprised at how much of a difference a good pair of glasses can make. Which is why GlassesUSA.com offers thousands of different frames for glasses and sunglasses from so many different brands like Gucci, Oakley, Ray-Bans, and tons more. And the frames start at just $39, which can be up to 70% off a of retail price. They just launched a new collection handpicked and curated by actress Marseille Martin, inspired by her advocacy for positive representation and breaking down barriers. They offer an AR virtual try-on feature for some of the lenses, and they also have a quiz you can take that helps you make a better decision. It only takes about a minute and suggests the right pair of glasses based on your face shape, your preferred materials, frame size, and any other needs you may have. I love the frames that I've gotten from them. Uh, these ones are from the Save the Tortoise collection. Together with the American Tortoise Rescue Foundation, they created a unique eyewear collection that takes inspiration from endangered tortoises and up to 10% of the proceeds are being donated to the foundation. Uh, I love GlassesUSA.com. I literally, I use them for my, these are my, these are my daily glasses and I got them from them and I, I really like it. And only for the next 24 hours, GlassesUSA.com is offering an exclusive discount on top of any coupon code they currently have on the website just for my viewers. Thanks to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and thanks to my patrons who are able to get all my videos early and ad free for just $1 a month, including episodes of my weekly podcast, Fanboy Talk. Also, the people of Metropolis don't think that Superman even has a secret identity. He doesn't wear a mask. They, they think he's just Superman all the time and he's always Supermaning around everywhere. He lives in the North Pole, basically. So they're not going to be looking for every, like, mild-mannered reporter with black hair and glasses that they see. And even then, the worst-case scenario is someone's going to go up to Clark Kent and be like, hey, dude, you kind of look like Superman. That's crazy, right? It's not, like, it's not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. That's not part of the ad. I just I just needed to talk about that. Now, Superman has had games for him made in the past. We're not that starving like the Green Arrow fans are. It's me. I'm Green Arrow fans. His first game outing was in 1979 on the Atari 2600 with these incredibly lifelike graphics. After that, he was in plenty of handheld games and arcade side-scrolling beat-em-ups, but the first 3D outing for the character was on the Nintendo 64 with Superman The New Adventures, also known as Superman 64. This game is not great. Bad. It's bad. It's really bad. The graphics were rough even for the time. The gameplay was repetitive. The controls were janky. It was riddled with glitches. And it gave a whole generation of millennials severe PTSD about flying through rings. Needless to say, it wasn't the best first outing for the Man of Steel. Superman Shadow of Apocalypse, based on the animated series, and Superman the Man of Steel, an original Xbox exclusive, actually released within a couple months of each other. They came a little bit closer, especially Shadow of Apocalypse with its cell shading. Then in 2006, Superman Returns released as a tie-in to the movie the same name. And to this day, it's still the best attempt at an official Superman game we've ever gotten. The game is pretty decent, with the most notable gameplay decision being that Superman doesn't have a health bar. He's invincible and immune to all damage. And it's instead the city of Metropolis which has a damage meter. If the city takes too much damage, either from enemies or from Superman himself, then it's game over. Personally, I think that this idea works really well on paper, but in terms of actual gameplay, I don't really love it. To me, it felt like you were micromanaging and babysitting the city instead of saving it. It's definitely a very cool idea and could be expanded upon in the future, but regardless, just the act of being able to fly around in an open world Metropolis was a huge leap forward. But in the 18 years since then, Superman hasn't really made that jump into the modern gaming era. The only thing we've gotten has been the Lego Batman games and Lego DC Supervillains, which is criminally underrated. No pun intended. Actually, fuck it, pun intended. But seriously, that game is straight up just Lego DC the game. There are so many deep cuts for characters and nobody really knows about it because they just marketed the Joker, but it's genuinely great. And then we have the Injustice Games, a fighting game franchise that cemented the idea into a lot of stupid people's heads that Superman is only interesting when he's evil. I love Injustice 2 but I can't ever tell anybody that because they always think that I love the story and the weird character assassinations that they did to Superman and Wonder Woman. But in reality, I just like Black Canary. And so apart from that, the best we have right now is Superman in Fortnite. 
which I don't know about you, but that's definitely the Superman experience that I'm looking for. For years, there have been leaks and rumors that Rocksteady after Arkham Knight was working on their own Superman game, which got denied by Warner Brothers. Those rumors have seemingly been disproven by Jason Schreier, saying that Rocksteady never pitched a Superman game and started working on Suicide Squad immediately after they finished Arkham VR. But back in 2008, a modern open world Superman game was being developed by Factor 5 under the codename Blue Steel. Can we see that one? Blue Steel? Yeah. It was a very ambitious project, featuring fully destructible environments and interiors, and a plethora of famous Superman villains like Brainiac and Doomsday and Darkseid. However, the publisher Brash Entertainment was having financial problems, and so the project was canceled just like their solo Flash game. We were so close. Like, it, it pains me to think about how close we were. And so to fill that void, in recent years, fans have taken it upon themselves to develop their own games for the Blue Boy Scout. Whether that's adding the character to an Unreal Engine 5 demo, showing what a hyper-realistic Superman game could look like, or most notably, a game called Undefeated. Undefeated is a free-to-play game for PC that came out in 2019, where you play as this guy who's basically a sunglasses-wearing Superman, with a little bit of Goku, and maybe some All Might thrown in there. You run and fly around this open-world city, stopping crimes and saving people. It's a little bit undercooked, obviously, it's essentially just a concept demo, but you feel feel fast and powerful, and it's genuinely a ton of fun, especially when you put into perspective the budget that went into it. And it just makes you wonder what's holding DC back from making their own official Superman game in the same vein. Like, do I really gotta wait till 2035 for Superman to be public domain before I can get a Superman game? And even then, it's gonna be like a like a like a horror game. It's not even gonna be like what I'm looking for, especially with so many Superman projects on the horizon and the character's popularity growing more and more now that he's in the spotlight of things like My Adventures with Superman and Superman Legacy. Now it seems like a good a time as any to finally take a crack at it. All I'm saying is, if we can have like a dozen great Spider-Man games, then we as a society should be allowed to have one good Superman game where he's not evil. And that brings us to today, where Superman is finally in a new video game and he's evil, and you're supposed to kill him. Awesome. Now, I'm not hating on the Suicide Squad game or anything, but from day one, it was clear that it just wasn't gonna be my kind of game. Not only is it about evil versions of my favorite characters that the whole point is you're supposed to kill them, but the gameplay never really interested me. I really don't care for Terra Strong as Harley, and I'm not really into the looter shooter style of grinding or the live service model in general, especially with how a lot of the DNA seems to be WB forcing them to follow trends that audiences frankly got sick of three years ago. If that's your thing, more power to you, and no disrespect to Rocksteady because they're a great studio and God knows how hard it is to make a AAA game in this industry right now. But based on the early reception, I don't think I'm entirely alone when I say I would have much preferred a simpler experience more akin to Batman Arkham or Insomniac Spider-Man. It's kind of funny actually. Insomniac took pages out of the Arkham book for Spider-Man and it looks like Rocksteady took pages out of the Sunset Overdrive book for this. Well, well, well how the turntables. Now, the rumors of Rocksteady making a Superman game that got canceled were confirmed to be false. But with the game set in an open world metropolis where you fight off Brainiac's henchmen and literally the first thing we ever saw was a picture of Superman with a target on his head, I don't think it's unreasonable for some people to be a bit disappointed with the direction of this game and think that they're playing in the ruins of a canceled solo Superman experience. Like they gave the guy trunks. You don't do that unless if you really give a shit about Superman, you know? But regardless, the whole thing has gotten a lot of people asking the question, what could a modern open world Superman game look like? When talking about hypothetical Superman game ideas, the same question gets brought up. How do you make it work? How can you play as an invincible alien god while still making the experience fun for the player and sticking true to the core ideas of the character? I've seen a lot of ideas get thrown around, playing instead as a depowered Superman, doing what Superman Returns did and making the core gameplay about preventing damage to the city. Or just make it a telltale game, but that's just a cop-out. I'm sorry, every superhero would make a good telltale game. And longtime viewers of the channel may remember that even I made a video talking about the dilemma a while back, about if it was impossible. But since then, I've thought more and more about it, and... Well... It's not that deep. I think that it's mostly because this conversation is all in hypotheticals and done mostly by comic book fans who really strive to have every aspect of the character's power set perfectly represented, whether or not it makes a good video game. When in reality, to make a good Superman game, you just have to make a good video game. And any other ideas or gameplay mechanics are just icing on the cake, but you don't want to make the entire game icing. It reminds me a lot of like the 2010s era of Superman media that tried really hard to modernize him. So many writers felt that he was boring or overpowered, so they did everything they could to subvert the character or make him into something that he wasn't. And I think that that trend in turn led to a lot of people thinking that they don't like him. When in reality, the character isn't that complicated. There are a lot of complex things to him and complex ideas that he represents, and that's why I love him so much. But really, at his core, He's just a dude, a regular guy that wants to do the right thing. It's part of why my adventures with Superman was so good and so successful because they leaned into that. And I think that that might be the same solution to the impossible Superman predicament. Because when you buy a video game, there's kind of a transaction that you make. I mean, yeah, you give them money 
It li- that's literally the definition of a transaction. But you have this understanding, especially when you buy a game about a pre-existing character like Superman or Spider-Man, that it's not always going to be one-to-one and there are going to be some sacrifices made for the sake of gameplay. Like the combat, for example. I hear the argument all the time saying, if he's just fighting normal people, how is he not killing them? And the answer is kind of obvious. He's just not. When Batman drops a hundred stories onto some guy's spine, nobody seems to care. When Spider-Man bounces a guy off of concrete back into the air to keep hitting him, nobody bats an eye. You just say he's pulling his punches. But then you bring up the idea of Superman doing it and everyone loses their minds. And you might be asking, if Superman is so strong, how could there be any challenge to it? To which, again, is obvious. It takes a couple of hits for Kratos to kill something, despite the fact that he can canonically do this. You know why? Because it's a video game. It's not real. Hell, it's even easier than that. You just give Superman stronger guys to punch. Like, just make them aliens or robots or something, and then you're, we're good. I think it would be really fun if there were sort of like weaker enemies that go down in one or two hits, and then different tiers that are more resilient and scattered throughout those waves. Sort of like how Arkham Knight or Spider-Man had the bigger brute enemies. So while normal enemies go down no problem, these take a little bit more, and maybe there are higher and higher tiers to maybe even going up to mini boss or boss level. And that variety with the enemy type will let you be able to let loose in different encounters. And those bigger boss fights could pull some gameplay mechanics from the 3D Arena Dragon Ball games like Kakarot or Budokai Tenkaichi 3, which is the best one. I, it is. It's the best one. The Arkham games had a variety of open combat and stealth sequences, which the Spider-Man games took a lot of DNA from. But Superman isn't really a stealthy character like Batman or Spider-Man. So it might be cool if instead of like stealth sequences, there were kind of breach sequences, I guess, where there are gunmen holding people hostage who will shoot at the first sign of trouble. And so you have to plan your route and use super speed to take everyone out and keep everyone alive. It could be sort of like the fear multi takedowns in Arkham Knight, but on a bigger scale. Basically, my point is that you don't don't have to overthink it. These are all ideas, but they're not a requirement. You just have to make a Superman game. There is one gameplay aspect that I think might be a little tough though, but I'll get to that in a bit. In terms of the story, I know James Gunn has talked a lot about how he wants to set video games in his new interconnected DC universe. I'm not sure how serious he is about that or if that's just talk for the investors, but that's a big ask. Video games take a long time to develop and it would be a disservice to try and force that medium to fit within a movie timeline. And we might end up back in that era of rushed movie tie-in games. On top of that, I think that having multiple versions of characters in pop culture simultaneously, like the different Spider-Man or Batman, is actually a good thing and allows for more creative liberties and accessibility for their stories. Like imagine if they had tried forcing in Arkham Asylum into the Dark Knight universe, which they almost did because it was originally going to be a Dark Knight movie tie-in. Luckily, it seems like Elseworlds stories aren't going anywhere and this new universe is going to be a little bit looser and not as strict with its connections compared to something like the MCU, which excites me. And with the Arkham universe seemingly being able to continue from here, my guess is that if there's an idea for a game that could potentially fit into the universe, then James Gunn will try and squeeze it in by casting the same actors and voices for the mocap. Sort of like Cameron Monaghan for Cal Kestis in the Jedi games. But if it doesn't fit or if if the developer wants to go in a different direction, then they'd be able to do that too. And that's kind of exciting because games could be a way to explore characters that otherwise may not be given the spotlight in movies, like Green Arrow or Batman Beyond, or they could make The Flash into a gaming icon because God knows the movie didn't work out with him. For this, because we don't really know much about Superman Legacy yet, let's just say it's its own thing or set early in the Arkham universe or something. But what I'm doing here could probably fit, actually, so honestly, go for it, you know? I want the game to open in Smallville 15 years ago. Clark Kent, just a child, is outside on his farm when out of nowhere, his body begins to feel weightless and he's lifted off the ground by an unknown force. He starts floating up and up and he can't stop. He starts to panic and scream, unable to return to the ground, and his parents come running outside. His father calls out to him and tries to calm him down. Clark closes his eyes and takes a deep breath and he slowly starts to get control back before landing in his parents' arms. And we cut to the present day. Clark Kent, now 22, stands on the roof of a skyscraper overlooking the city of Metropolis, wearing a t-shirt, jeans, and red cape tied around his neck. He crouches down and leaps into the sky and Superman begins to fly. I would really want to put an emphasis on the flight because I actually I actually think that flying is going to be the most difficult thing to pull off in terms of the gameplay, but it's also the most important. Superman's flight would need to feel fast and powerful, with tons of maneuverability and options to move around, with a skill floor that makes it easy for anyone to pick up, but also enough going on that it can be mastered. And the sheer act of flying and moving through the air needs to be fun on its own before anything else. To me, the best kind of movement mechanics are the ones that require you to always be doing something. For web swinging, you pull the trigger for each swing and feel your momentum move you forward. For Batman's gliding, you have to dive bomb to keep building speed. Even something like super speed, you have to avoid obstacles and react quickly. There's moment to moment gameplay involved and real world physics that can be applied to make it feel more satisfying. For Superman's flight though, there's not really that real life sense of physics to pull from. Sure, we have planes in video games and games like the Lego games or Undefeated have done flying. And I think that it's fun and enjoyable for what those games are going for, especially the scale of those games, but they all feel like they're missing something. In every game, if I have to go from point A to point B, I always feel like I'm just watching it happen and not actively participating like I am with swinging or gliding, unless if I'm actively flying lower to the ground 
road and have to avoid obstacles. Now, you could always pull from the original Superman stories before the character could fly, since that was a concept that came a bit later. So the character could just start out running on power lines and leaping tall buildings, which is what Grant Morrison's action comics run and Gene Luen Yang's Superman Smashes the Clan did, two of my favorite Superman comics. And back in that original video, my solution was to have a meter that filled up and flying would spend it, meaning that you'd have to manage that resource properly to move around the map. But that's another thing that I think sounds good on paper without considering the fun factor and the importance of flying in a Superman game. When you buy a Spider-Man game, what is the main thing you're looking for? The swinging. And Insomniac knows that. It's quite literally the first thing that they make you do and is a main selling point of the game. The Spider-Man swinging is so fun on a moment to moment level that you've got people buying $500 PS5s just to do that. And I think the same thing applies to Superman with his flight. It shouldn't be something that you're limited to use or has to be unlocked nine hours in. It should be something that's there from the start. Normally when I make these types of game idea videos, I try to find a game that I can reference, whether it be Sifu's Combat for a Daredevil game or Burnout Paradise for a Flash game, all separate videos you should check out after this one. I usually like to have some tangible thing where I know that it's been done right before I give it my thoughts. But for flying, I haven't really been able to find that one game that gets it perfectly that I'm looking for. The Lego games come close but aren't able to scratch that itch. I don't find myself flying around for fun like I should be. The best example I've actually been able to find is, honestly, Spider-Man 2. Which I know sounds like a basic answer. I'm not really digging deep for indie games here. I've talked about that game for two and a half fucking hours. I don't ever want to hear Spider and Man in the same sentence for the next six months. <laughs> But in Spider-Man 2, with the new web wings, you're able to zip around the city super fast using momentum and air currents, and it's an entire movement system on its own, especially with the effects and the haptics where you can literally feel the wind rush past you. But at the end of the day, it's still gliding. You lose momentum over time, and you have to dive bomb or swing to keep going. So maybe take those mechanics and the same principles and the same ideas, and basically just slap on an invisible booster to the bottom of his feet so you're always moving forward. A lot of this can also be resolved with good world design and encouraging the player to fly in a way that's more exciting. Maybe there could be like a boost meter that can can build up over time with little tricks and loops, or the world could reward you for playing more dangerously and flying low to the ground and near missing obstacles, like something like a racing game. Or instead of a dedicated boost meter, it's just a small burst of speed every time, like a like like the tricks in Mario Kart, you know? Maybe you can even fly through, don't say rings, don't say rings, don't say rings, don't say rings, circles to go faster. Hell yeah. Nailed it. Or maybe I'm doing exactly what I say the problem is, and I'm overthinking it. It very much could be as simple as taking what the LEGO games did, making it faster, and slapping on some insomniac quality animations and haptics, and we're good. Either way, the flight is very much something that can't really be talked about in this like armchair developer kind of way, and it needs a lot of small human touches to make it feel alive in the same way that the Spider-Man swinging does. I think it'd be neat if the opening mission could be Superman's first appearance in Metropolis. He's done some hero work back in Smallville, but now in the big city, he's trying to make a name for himself and help as many people as he can. Having the game set this early in his career is a way to pretty easily write off any of the he's too OP criticisms. But also at the start, you could just have your super speed, strength, and flight, and then over the course of the story, you slowly unlock more and more of his abilities. Like X-ray and heat vision, ice breath, super hearing, super ventriloquism, tiny Superman, you know, just the main core power set. I'm picturing it sort of like how Jedi Fallen Order did it. With each big power up, we get a flashback to Clark as a kid in Smallville and see the ways that it accidentally manifested before now he has control of it as an adult. Like maybe during a fight with a bully, he accidentally uses his heat vision or he gets overwhelmed by super hearing. Just so long as they don't pull a Smallville and have him commit a crime? What the fuck, Clark? Look away. As for the plot of the game, I think it could be interesting if when Clark first shows up, Metropolis is basically under the control of the underground crime syndicate Intergang, armed with alien technology and weapons. That could be a simple way to explain why all the enemies have tech that allows them to fight back against Superman. Someone is giving them these weapons, and it could allow for segments where we play as Clark Kent and have to do some investigative journalism and track down leads. Maybe there's a crime scene and Clark is able to better examine evidence using his x-ray vision or super hearing. It could be like the detective sequence in the Arkham games. Throughout the story, we could face off against a variety of different Superman villains like Lobo or Toyman or Metallo or maybe even Brainiac or Bizarro. And I think it'd be really interesting to see the relationship with Lex Luthor develop. It could be something like in Superman Secret Origins. Before Clark showed up, everyone looked up to Lex and we could see how he reacts to the Superman showing up in his city and seemingly taking that glory away from him and how it drives him to his classic supervillainy. And we reveal that he's behind giving Inner Gang the weapons. In terms of the visual style, I know everyone wants games to be hyper-realistic nowadays, being able to see all the individual pores and in 8K on the NPC half a mile away. But honestly, I would really like to see more stylized approaches to comic book games. The new Hellboy game, Web of Word, is a great example. The game on its own is a pretty good time. It's nothing groundbreaking as a roguelite or anything, and the controls are kind of janky. But oh my god, the visuals of that game are stunning. It's like Mike Mignola's comic art just sprung to life. It's genuinely incredible. And while maybe not going that far in terms of mimicking comic art or anything, I think that more intentional art direction and being willing to be a bit more stylized would be a nice change of pace for superhero games. Especially if it could theoretically save on some 
budget and resources for the game's performance. As for Superman's character arc, I would want to see him build up his relationship with Metropolis, maybe even having his costume develop from the t-shirt and jeans into the more iconic design. At first, he's scared of this new big city and being so far away from Smallville, but over time, he grows more comfortable and changes from that farm boy into calling Metropolis his new home. Because a huge part of a Superman game would be getting the open world right. In the same way that New York and Spider-Man are tied together, Superman is the same with Metropolis. But the key difference is, despite how much the movies might try to tell you different, Metropolis is not New York. It should be golden, futuristic, and hopeful, with massively tall Art Deco skyscrapers and a big fucking spinning globe on top of a newspaper building that doesn't do anything and just looks cool. Maybe as the story progresses, the city of Metropolis could grow more and more brighter as Superman starts to make more of a difference and the people start to become more hopeful. As cool as it would be to do what Blue Steel was trying to do, having a fully destructible city with interiors that you could grapple enemies through, that might be a little bit out of the realm of possibility. Instead, it'd be cool if there could still be exterior damage to all the buildings and walls, sort of like how in Arkham Knight when you drive the Batmobile you can just like cut a corner like that. And as Superman you could use your super speed to repair the damage either mid-fight or during the cleanup. And that has an impact on the city and how it respects you. That way we can still have something sort of akin to what Superman Returns did, but without a dedicated health bar for the city and making that the primary gameplay loop. But the city above all else should feel alive. There should be random crimes out in the open world, random villain attacks or natural disasters where you have to save people, NPCs walking around and interacting with Superman, and maybe even little menial tasks of people just calling out and asking for his help. There was some discourse a little while ago about how Superman shouldn't be stopping to save cats out of trees or help old ladies cross the road or anything else that the average person could physically do. Because any time quote unquote wasted on that is time taken away from huge disasters and threats. And if you ask me, I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding of the character. Superman always has time to save a cat out of a tree. The whole point of the character is that he's able to do it all, save the world, but also still find the time to lend you a hand. I mean, for his original comics, that's all he did. He was the champion of the oppressed going around beating up scummy landlords and abusive husbands, not stopping nukes or alien invasions. I think when superheroes focus too much on the big threats and forget about the real people they're supposed to help, the genre devolves from what makes it special into just another generic action story. Those little things matter, and a character like Superman is never supposed to forget that. I like the idea that when Clark first shows up, the people of Metropolis start writing letters to the Daily Planet asking for his help. Maybe Jimmy Olsen is like curating them or something, I don't know. It could be like the app requests from the Spider-Man games, but specifically how they were handled in Miles Morales with named characters and storylines where we grow closer to the people of Metropolis and even leading into the ending of the main story. Honestly, Spider-Man 2 is like really close to being just a Superman game. Like they even have the cape physics and everything. Or they could do something similar to the Nemesis system. The Nemesis system was a gameplay mechanic created by Monolith for their Shadow of Mordor games, which are great games. I, I like was obsessed with that first game. It was so cool. The basic idea is that when you're killed in that game, the enemy that killed you is assigned a name, a set of voice lines, and a ton of other personality traits, turning an NPC into a full-on character. And then that enemy can climb through the ranks and get more powerful and you can run into them again and they'll remember your history. It was a super cool concept, like genuinely revolutionary. Warner Brothers ended up patenting the system a little while back, meaning that it's limited to only their games now and can't be expanded upon by other publishers because fuck progress, I guess. But horrors of capitalism aside, imagine that system, but instead of for enemies, it would be for the people you save as Superman. If you end up helping the same NPC enough times, you start to learn their names and they end up getting a bigger role in the open world. Maybe instead of the nemesis system, you could call it the friends system. Honestly, I care more about this kind of thing, the people and making the little things matter more than I do about a main storyline. If you give me a Superman game where there's no story and all I have to do is fly around and help people, I would be 100% satisfied. I just wanna make it clear, when I say just make a Superman game, I'm not in any way trying to imply that it's easy. We all know game development is an insanely difficult job. There are so many problems with this industry and massive layoffs are happening right now. AAA games specifically is a bubble that's about to burst. And any bad game isn't because of a failure of the developers, but just just a set of circumstances that was likely out of their control. And I'm not demanding Rocksteady make a Superman game either. They've been doing the Arkham thing for over 15 years now. I would be totally interested in whatever IP they end up doing next, and I don't want to restrict them to just the DC developers. What I'm trying to get at is that a Superman game doesn't have to be complicated. I bring up all these ideas, but it doesn't have to overthink itself and come up with gameplay systems that perfectly recreate that one-to-one -one feeling of being an all-powerful alien from Krypton. You don't have to be able to fly around the entire planet or have to meticulously prevent the city from being destroyed. It just has to be a fun game. Just like the character, this icon who so many people have gotten through their heads that they have to reinvent or modernize. When at the end of the day, when you strip it all back, He's pretty simple. And with the state of the whole games industry, with Suicide Squad and its overly complicated live service model and the massive success of single player games like Alan Wake or God of War or Spider-Man, I think people are looking for just that, simple. So DC, just make a Superman game already. It's time.
I think we're ready for it. But let me know down below what you would want in a Superman game. And what do you think of that new Suicide Squad game? Seriously, like, let me know if it's good, because if it is, I'll pick it up. But I genuinely just don't know. But if you like this video, be sure to let the YouTube algorithm know and hit the like button and subscribe. Special thanks to Alta the Sting, Anz, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy, Carolyn Brenneman, Chicken McDoofus, Cook C, Cosmic Tragedy, Danny Boy, David Walton, Deco PY, DJ Ricky 08, Dreamer Who, Eden Kenna, Egan McFarlane, Howard Bell, Iron Ninja, Jake Sully, Corey's Not Fresh, Murren09, Pencil Fan, Spectacular Clyde, Tim Newfeld, Trans. Huntress, Choice of Spy Razor's Lame, Tyler Goodrich, Josh Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, and Zero to Hero 1 for 8 for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This has been Troy Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible, and I'll see you around.